track about two kilometres north of the Upper Dinner Knolls, which are a very important Aboriginal site, and they show an old sea floor of uh, date at which I'll get to give to you in a few minutes. But this is Knolls track heading south. As you can see, there's uh, bush rat colonies in the side, or they were, and uh, the track has gradually sunk in. And one of the things we've got to be very wary of on this track is the periodic washouts that we're coming against. We're just coming up to the first of the Aperdina Knolls now. Quite a delightful walk to the top of the southern one. Signage here that tells us all about it. Don't drive on the knolls and stick to the designated tracks. Common sense everywhere. There's the second knoll over there with Yoakum on the top. coming into the car park area of the Upper Dinner Knolls. And um, so these hills, this is the southernmost of the... I got all excited about the prospect of these gypsum outcrops being stromatolites but um, Dr. David Johnson from the University James Cook in Townsville said pour sulfuric acid on them if it bubbles then they're stromatolites. Well I poured sulfuric acid on them they didn't bubble. This is uh, about 7 k's down Knoll's track coming into one of the gypsum salt pans and it was from these sorts of salt pans that the upper dinner knolls were formed when the wind blew the crystals up into dunes and uh, the, most of them have been eroded away bar those two so they are very special sites. We're 17 kilometres south from the French line on the Knolls track as you can see it's fairly easy going uh, but take it steady uh, you never know when a washout's going to appear or you've got to do a sharp turn to cross a dune but in the main it's a fairly benign track let's hope it stays that way Knowles track 18 kilometres south from the French line it's almost like a racetrack and then suddenly oh my gosh we've got to turn right and go over a dune into the Roly Poly and June model country. Another vehicle, kilometre or so in head. This is the vehicle we've just been following. Uh, they're going to go uh, west now on the WAA line. We're going to continue down to the rig road. So um, here we go. We're on camera even. So um, it's bye bye to Yoakum. And this is the start of the, or continuation of Knoll's track from the WAA line to the rig road. So 
seven kilometres from here to the rig road, then we turn west. We'll keep in touch with the people we just saw on the HF radio system, uh, as long as we don't mesh up with the skids from Alice Springs or Adelaide or Darwin. But uh, we'll listen out anyway and have a chat then. Noel's track about a kilometre south from the WAA line turn off. It looks like we'd be the first people that are down here this year. Um, there's certainly no indication of recent vehicle tracks, so uh, it's an assumption I'll make. And you know what they say about assumptions. One of the joys of being the first people on the track, of course, is um, clearing it. That's why it's always important to have a passenger on board. When you don't have gates to open, you have trees to drag off the track. This is Noel's track. We're about uh, three kilometres from the rig road. And uh, I think there's a, the rig road, in fact, uh, flips off to the left here, not far ahead. So, uh, but we've got to go down further to get onto it there. So. So there it is, the rig road, we turn right here and uh, or go straight down and go left onto the K1 line if we want to go that way, but Dalhousie 281 kilometres to the right. That's where we're going. This road was called the rig road because uh, back in the 70s it was all clay capped right the way from Dalhousie um, over to the K1 line and up the K1 line. So as a consequence, in the main, it's a good piece of road. Um, there are some significant washouts on it, so you've got to keep your wits about you, and any of the dune crossings can be rather entertaining, as we'll probably see soon. Um, tracks indicate we're not the first people across the rig road this year, so Whoever's gone across it has gone through to the K1 line or come from the K1 line. So, um, you see here some of the remnants of the clay capping, but then you've got the dunes blown in over the top of the clay cap. Uh, which mean that the uh, clay capping is often gone all together or is impassable in some places uh, where the clay's been eroded down. Coming off the uh, first dune we crossed and down onto the salt lake. This is one of the spots where the road, has, the old clay road has washed out quite badly and uh, the, the lads have developed an alternative route but sometimes these alternative routes can probably be worse than the old clay road but uh, then once you get back onto the clay cap road again it's uh, off and running. My gosh we're up to 30 kilometers an hour with 40 kilometers an hour. Veritable speedway. This is the killer parts of the rig road. You can see that's the old clay capped road going up there and um, there's no way on this earth you'd get through there. Uh, you'd get hung up too easily so uh, an alternative road has been broken through here. We come back onto the clay capping and you can see here where the centre of the clay capping is eroded out so we'll be going up the left hand side on the edge of the old original clay capping so and then the dunes have drifted over the top so you've got these lovely soft tops on the dunes which are always rather entertaining but if you go back from here to the K1 line the dunes are about 10 times worse than that real killers you really need to know what you're doing the dune on the rig road that you can see the old rig road is totally eroded 
so we have to take the alternative route. VMS Navigator's got us pointed in the right way and uh, says we're on track so it's always reassuring. Then we'll give a call in a minute uh, when we get to the next dunes to advise other traffic that we're on the road. So uh, always important to keep that channel 10 open and keep your advice out the position. Some more of this gypsum geocrete rock exposure, either an old dune or a beach line of an old lake. And when it was all dry about, well at least 25,000 years ago during the last ice age, these dunes were blown up by the wind and established and in the main have been fossilised since then, but the tops are still mobile on many of them. Very scenic little traverse here along the edge of the Salt Lake. <coughs> Obviously the uh, boys that put the rig road through uh, avoided the lakes because they were thin crusted and uh, the rigs would have dropped straight through. Big heavy oil reeling trucks and rig. This is where the old clay rig road used to cross the outflow from the Salt Lake. But as you can see, it's um, eroded away very badly. So we uh, will not bother going down that one and a half, two metre drop into the gully. We'll uh, go around it and get back onto the clay capping. Another one of the um, washouts. The road in the main tends to be very good, but um, when you have these sorts of um, problems with the road, it's uh, not a good idea to keep going straight. So we take the detour off the road, and then when we get back onto the road, it's for a road that hasn't been serviced for 50 years, um, to just have a few corrugations is pretty good.